Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Wickham Simons and we want to thank you for joining us. Uh, welcome, this is the first annual summer virtual keto dinner uh, and we're really happy that you joined us for this. I'd like to introduce to you uh, some of our team members. I don't think if you've been watching us, you may not know uh, Dale and Kim Scheidler, they're uh, marketing experts, but they also put on uh, these uh, dinners and they're uh, great at it. And to be honest with you, I'm an amateur at the dinners. So I couldn't <laughs> do it without them. And so I'm going to introduce them first. And then we had Michelle Kennedy, who you know, who is a uh, nurse practitioner at Dr. Simon's Metabolics and Weight Loss. And then I'd like to introduce Tina Systems, who some of you also know because you've been a guest on the program before. Right. So she's a, uh, she uh, kind of fulfills multiple roles in our practice and she is a nutrition expert and if you know anything about like our metagenics uh, uh, vitamin and supplement line you know that tina knows a ton about that sort of stuff a ton about uh, uh, protein supplements and about um, exercise and working out you can tell by her physique that um, she's an expert at that sort of thing <laughs> you don't even have to really even say it right so uh anyway we're so glad that you joined us tonight and um um, I'm going to ask you to forgive me. I have to kind of, because we're, this is longer than what we normally do. Yeah. And so I kind of have to have a little guide, you know, someone to kind of say, hey, this is what you're supposed to say. This is how it's supposed to flow and everything. And uh, I'll just say that, you know, uh, you can feel free to interrupt me. Yeah, yeah, we're going to need to take the, take the uh, nervousness <laughs> off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, there you go. That's right. Yes. Okay. So. Yeah. This can be followed really if you were to go to our website, simonsmetabolics.com, and to click the Facebook icon. Yep, so we, that's right. So there we, we got go. this. I'm going to cool. come up closer for you. Yep. We've got this uh, ready for you. So if you are watching live, we've done a couple of these virtual dinners. Just make sure you like the video. Make sure that you are uh, commenting with us. We want to see your comments. Um, you know, interact, ask questions, and then of course share it. Share it to your friends on your page. So all you have to do is just. At the bottom, go to share, and it'll go right to your page, and you and your friends can watch along with us. So, the keto diet, right? The keto diet, yes. Yeah. Everything's keto here tonight. That's right. And um, I think you're going to see that you don't have to, you know, doing a keto diet doesn't have to be a bad experience from a taste and variety standpoint. It's a great way to lose weight. Uh, I believe in that. But I also believe that it's a great way to correct underlying metabolic abnormalities that go along with obesity, such as diabetes and high cholesterol and hypertension and those sorts of things. And so this is why we teach it. We really believe in it. So, and, and you just yeah. also are celebrating. The reason we're throwing this party is yeah. you're celebrating 5,000 plus followers on your casual keto page, right? That, that's correct. Right? Yeah. So we're really excited about that. That's huge. To have 5,000 yeah. followers on the, um, the casual keto page. We wanted to really create that because uh, we needed a place where people could share ideas, right? And yeah. and and um, could see that hey, it doesn't have to be a boring thing, right? Mm -hmm. So whether you're really into um, you know the, the foodie scene and the recipe sharing, giving tips and stuff, this is kind of a common place you can do that. And um, the community, uh, we've got a great community on that site, and um, they've really responded to that and. Um, and there's some fantastic stuff on there. If you've not visited that site, yeah, wow, it's a home run. Yeah, so I know Kim and I will always, uh, obviously we, we go out there, we curate a bunch of recipes. Kim, you get to work with a lot of those keto communities that are out there. And then of course we get it, we get it over to you, Dr. Simons, yeah. and then you kind of put your extra touch on it because obviously you want to make sure, number one, just because it looks keto, we want to make sure it is keto. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, and I kind of like the way we did it as casual keto because so much in that kind of keto universe is kind of the rules that you keep. Right, right. right. You got all these rules, right? Too many rules. Right. For most people. Exactly. To feel comfortable right. tackling it. But it's easy. That's yes, right. And that's what and we there's want to wiggle project. room. Yeah. Like, hey, absolutely. you don't have to be you know, crazy here mm -hmm. to be able to get the benefits from this, right? Yeah. And keto is not a tiny box that you have to fit in. Yeah, there's right. a lot of uh, options. Uh, uh, it's not black and white. There's a lot of gray <laughs> area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can show you, of course, here and then on the site, how many different options using lots of colorful like even vegetables. It's not just all 
bacon and fat and you know quick stuff it can be quick stuff it can be um, you know really good high fat but it can be also olives and nuts and the delicious things we're yeah. going to show you about today that's right that's right and it doesn't so yeah i think that you know there's this mistaken perception that it's meat eggs cheese and butter and that's it right yeah. right and it's a lot more than that you can really have a party yeah yeah so Kim, I know, um, curates a lot of the, you know, she's working with those communities. She's getting it to you, Dr. Simons. But today, I just want to give her a little bit of a shout out. She prepared a lot of these things for us tonight. A lot of these dishes, a lot of the things that you guys are going to see tonight. We want to definitely make sure that you guys get a nice little food tour. I know you're watching at home, but we prepare, we plan to eat and have a good time tonight with you as we answer some questions. Um, but Kim, you you definitely have learned that there is really a variety with keto. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, just like Dr. Simons was saying, it's not about just the meat, cheese, and butter. So yeah. there's absolutely a lot of variety. It's really a lot of traditional dishes and exciting popular dishes that you just take a few extra ingredients yes. that you may need to search a little bit for, but most of your grocery stores have it. Mm -hmm. That's that's right. Yeah. And um, I, I will say that, you know, um, true with most of my life that there's people there who make things happen behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Kim is one of those people, <laughs> yes. right? Oh, she made yeah. all of this happen. And We're I very great. We should yes. give credit where credit is due. And uh, yeah. she uh, made her kitchen available to do this. And she Happy put a lot to of it. this together. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really just fantastic. Thank mm -hmm. you Thank very you. much. Very welcome. Doing. I'm happy yeah. to have you guys here. Yeah. <laughs> and don't worry, we're going to show you the food. Don't worry, you'll see the food. Um, mainly because I want to like, I want to talk about my charcuterie here yeah, that I did. That's right. So yeah. I did the charcuterie here. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I bought this cake just for tonight. <laughs> there you go. This is, this is for me to you. I have 5,000 followers. Here we go. Yeah. This is a real moment. There you go. I'm going to have to display this. I'll sign it well. <laughs> that's right. It's a real milestone. There you go. Oh, my gosh. So, uh, anyway, it, this is uh, really cool that we're doing this, and we hope you have a good time uh, with us tonight. And um, we got a lot of cool questions and stuff uh, that we're going to get to in time. And, um, well, you know, people, for, yeah. people tuned in to start snacking. I'm sure right. they're at home. They followed, they voted on a lot of these recipes at home. Um, so, Michelle, why don't you talk a little bit about kind of how you talk to your patients about keto while we, I'm going to just do a little quick food tour while we hold some things up for you guys, sure. just to get you guys really excited. Yeah. You finished that beef stick. And we're, <laughs> we're gonna, Michelle, you go ahead and talk a little bit more about keto. And then what we'll do is we're also going to break off. So we've got some, co we have a cocktail that we want to share that you guys actually voted on at home. Good choice. So we're going to have some yeah. folks preparing the cocktails um, uh, for you guys. And then we've got a guatini, surprise, surprise. We added that to the menu because, hey, we had some avocados. Mm. We had some bacon. Yeah. Uh, so we made a guatini that we're going to dress up. So we'll we'll prepare that in the back and then bring it up to the front. But everything else is prepared. So I'm going to show you guys while uh, Michelle is uh, preparing to talk a little bit more about keto with Dr. Simon. And then Kim is going to be on the chat. So if you have questions, if you've got things that you wanted to highlight or shout out, just make sure that you're chatting in our comments and Kim will respond for you. All right. All right. So I'll let you guys take the floor and talk a little bit more about keto, and then I'm going to swing around and just hold up some dishes. All right. Now, look, I'll just say, for those of you who are joining and may not know much about me, I practice obesity medicine here in the Raleigh Durham area. So I help people lose weight uh, for the purposes of uh, improving their health, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, mm -hmm. there actually is a field of a medicine called obesity medicine, mm -hmm. and that's what Michelle and I did. Yes. And so um, this is our line of work. We have offices in Bali and offices oh, yeah. in Durham. Oh, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and so um, anyway, that's um, that's what we do for a living. And um, and we've spent a, a large portion here of the last, uh, well, it's been 15 years now for me. Mm -hmm. And it's been about 10 for you, right? There's a little over eight. For eight, eight. Yeah, 10 okay. is a nurse, right, yeah. eight working in obesity medicine specifically. Right. And uh, a lot of that time, I don't just teach keto. I think you're in the same boat. Right. We actually live it. We, we've practiced it. Um, I have cycled on and off 
but I still use a lot of keto recipes, even when I'm not 100% keto and when I'm being more casual about it, I still use the recipes and that's what's nice too, is even if you're not committed you know, totally every day, every meal to being on a ketogenic plan, it can still be a, um, a way to find really healthy, delicious recipes that you can use when you have dinner parties or when you're cooking yourself, right? You can do keto by yourself or you can do it in a group of people or for a family. There's lots of options. Um, that's right. So the, um, I mean, I think that you can just start to wrap your mind around the idea that, hey, refined, refined grains and refined sugar are a real problem. And you can get these things out of your diet. There are replacements and, um, it's not that hard to do. Especially these yeah. days. Yeah. Especially these There's days. There's a lot of alternatives, yes. and uh, many stores carry this sort of thing now. Mm -hmm. And, and the, I, I think the whole idea of the casual keto site um, is a way that you can uh, find out how to use those alternative things mm -hmm. in a way that is pleasing to everybody. See, look at this, right? Oh, my yes. gosh. Did you say chocolate? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Did you say <laughs> chocolate? You say, well, how, can, can I have this on a keto so diet? And the answer is yes. Yeah. Yeah, there are ways to do this, and uh, and it tastes really good. Yeah. And so, um, I think that you know, um, if you some of the things that we teach that people initially maybe sneaks up on them, they have a hard time with, but then we kind of form them up to the idea, the idea that fat's not bad, right? Exactly. I think that's one of the biggest barriers for a lot of people. Uh, that and salt. I think yeah. a lot of people are still struggling because we were taught for so long by the government, by the USDA, that you had to have you know this much of this and this much of that, and you needed starch in your plate, and you needed to have um, you know, low salt and lots of fruits. That, we've come to find out, was not great advice. And that is why there are so many people struggling with health conditions, including obesity, including right. hypertension, including the things the keto diet is really good for. And so keto isn't about eating you know, nothing but fat, but fat is very important. It's filling, it's delicious. There are things called fat-soluble vitamins that you can't get if you don't consume fat. So it's a really important piece, and there are healthy fats and not as healthy fats, but, but most of the fats, natural fats, are very healthy, and we're gonna have a lot of them in our meal including this lovely charcuterie plate that's being mm -hmm. delved into. We just could not wait. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. right. Tina so. was like, Del, we know we got <laughs> And that's, that's really one of the concepts that right. I teach patients is that the fat occurs naturally in nature. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's there for you to eat, exactly. right? Yeah, this is okay to consume it. Uh, and, and you don't have to be scared of that sort of thing. You know, refined sugar didn't occur naturally in nature ever. And um, they just kind of made its appearance on the planet here in the last 75 years or so. And it's been pretty much a disaster everywhere that you introduced Same it, with right? refined but grains and right. refined potato products. Yeah, right. It, you know, this was never true of the fat, was it? Never. Our Always. ancestors ate it. Our bodies are adapted to it. And you, know, you don't have to worry about the fat because if you don't mix it with those refined carbohydrates, you stop at the right time. Mm -hmm. I would say, uh, feel free to... Uh, Go ahead and eat a stick of butter. Try it. You'll 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 stop absolutely. real quick. Yes. Yeah, yes, you won't absolutely. make it very far, right? I want to give a quick yeah. shout out. I see we've got. I hope I say this right. Agnieszka. Uh huh. That sounds right. Did I sound, said that, that right. A beautiful name. Want to say hello? Thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks. He, she says congratulations. Oh, that's right. so fair. Thank you. Absolutely. I'm so glad that you're here. That. Yeah, I appreciate you joining us and taking your time. If you'd out. like me to make Sunday you a dish, just yeah. simply tell me what you want. We've got <laughs> we've got salmon here. We've got roasted mashed cauliflower, and then these great turkey meatballs here that I'm going to actually double up on. Yeah, that's right. So Ooh, salmon, yeah. mashed cauliflower, mm -hmm. and roasted turkey meatballs. Um, let, let me ask you this, Del. The mm -hmm. didn't Mary have a little uh, video put together of kind of our team? Because there may be some people who don't know like about our team. Yep. So Mary, our producer. Yeah. Um, we're going to tee up. Tina obviously is from your team, but yeah. we you have a great team both in the Raleigh and the Durham market in North Carolina. So folks that are joining us that are outside of the North Carolina market, I want to just do a quick shout out to Sherry. Hello, Kristen. Hello. We appreciate you guys joining us. 
Um, Mary, let's go ahead and play a video for the Simons Metabolics and Weight Loss team. Yeah, I think that was a real cigar. In that <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was. I'm glad that someone didn't like that in the, in the office. Right. Um, okay, so um, Kim helped put this together. So I thought this would be a good time for Kim to talk about some of these um, some of these food items that we got. And uh, what do you say? Right. Yeah. Sounds take good. The, take you the floor. Salmon. Yeah. Go for All right. It. Great. All right, so right here, this is um, the pan-seared salmon with garlic butter sauce. It does not get any simpler than that, you yeah. guys. You just salt, pepper, olive oil, yeah. um, sear the salmon, yeah. um, and then while that's searing, you throw the garlic in. Okay. Let that kind of cook up a little bit because you don't want raw garlic. Right. And that's pretty much it, and then you just baste the salmon. This is done in less than 10 minutes. Yes, okay. It's super fast. Yeah. Um, so if you'd like to try a piece, yeah, look, here. Yeah, it's nice and flaky and just, mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's so easy to. Um, right over here, this is the garlic mashed cauliflower. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, all it is is boiled cauliflower, yeah. pureed um, with some roasted garlic yeah. and some herbs. Mm -hmm. And that's it, and a little bit of heavy cream, just a yeah. little splash. I like that, I like mm -hmm. that. It adds a little consistency mm -hmm. to it. You, you threw in some herbs and a little mm -hmm. bit of garlic in there, and that adds some, some flavor so it's not like, you know, overwhelming you with the idea of cauliflower. Oh, it's right? so good. You won't even miss the yeah. potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> Which it, is you know, it, she's really right about that. Oh, absolutely. And I don't ever really eat potatoes anymore. I mean, like if I'm at someone's house and they serve it to me or whatever, right. I'm not an ungracious host yeah. or uh, guest or anything. But mm -hmm. the, um, but you know, when I'm at home, like that's what I have. Yeah. You know, and it, it, I don't really miss the potatoes, mm -hmm. to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah. 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 All right, and then, and then we have our turkey meatballs. Turkey meatballs, right, right over yeah. here. Mm. Yeah. So let me ask you this about the meatballs. Some people, I run into some people, and they use a lot of breadcrumbs in their meatballs. Right. Yeah. Uh, any suggestions on that? You know what? These do not have any breadcrumbs in them, and they actually held together. You just yeah. use egg, um, right. Parmesan cheese, mm -hmm. mozzarella cheese, again, yeah. tons of herbs, yeah. mm -hmm. um, tons of flavor, garlic, and that's it. You throw them in the oven, they're done in yeah. 15 minutes. Awesome. It's so easy. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. There you go. Now, anyone who tells me that doesn't taste good, right. like, what's the deal? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, and lit. Exactly. Yeah. And it doesn't sound yeah. like there's a lot of special equipment, right? You need an oh, oven. Gosh, not at all. Maybe just a food processor or one of those hand blender things. Yeah. Do that. If you have a ninja blender, which right. I think everybody has a ninja blender these yeah. days of some That's sort. Um, yeah, super easy. Mm -hmm. cool. all right. And cost wise, I would say really the salmon fillets could be fresh or frozen. Right, yeah. right. Exactly. The cauliflower yeah. could be frozen exactly. or fresh. Exactly. Right. The turkey, fresh, yeah. you can yeah. buy it frozen, keep it in your freezer when you're ready to take yeah. it out. So it's not like you have to spend all this time getting everything that day to make it that night. You could go 
you know, once a month yeah. to, to a big box like Costco, get some frozen salmon flakes, get some ground turkey, get a big bag of cauliflower. You can make this whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I think okay. it's important that we point out that the viewers at home, the followers actually chose um, portions of this, mm -hmm. this menu. And I have yes. to give them a shout out because, <laughs> yes. you know, this is an elegant dish, um, uh, an elegant series of dishes, and it's an alternative to steak, right? Like mm -hmm. most people, when they think of uh, keto, they think of beef. And there's yeah, lots of beef yes. and lots of meat. But when you think of a salmon, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, it's, there's so many more benefits that mm -hmm. come with salmon. I mean, mm -hmm. the omega threes. They're just yeah. so. It's so good for you that I love that the followers at home. Like I see Martha just joined us um, in our chat. Martha, Martha, thank you for joining us. <laughs> um, and and Kim, let's talk about where we got a lot of these ingredients. We shopped at our neighborhood <laughs> Wegmans. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yes. And so for those that are yeah. watching, yeah. Um, we want to hear you in our chat. If you see something that you want to try and you would like to go to Wegmans, well, guess what? We've got a $75 gift card to Wegmans that we're going to give away. So all you have to do is in chat, just tell us which recipe or which dish you'd love to try at home, or you just want to take advantage of that $75 gift card to Wegmans and go shopping. Uh, there are lots of keto-friendly options there. Their seafood department is amazing. Their, their deli is amazing. There's a huge cheese department. Mm -hmm. uh, so oh, if you are, right. if you got a Wegmans near you, yeah. definitely make sure you're in chat. Tell us which recipes that you love the most that you see on camera right now. And just keep in mind, we still have a cocktail to come. We've got a guac tini <laughs> to come. Yes. And I believe there is some chocolate fudge. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not. Yes. I, well, I was surprised when I saw that this came first. Which we're all buying. <laughs> <laughs> it's up on a pedestal for a reason. <laughs> for a reason. And I do have say that if you don't tell your kids or your partner that this is mashed cauliflower, they wouldn't know what I mean. Don't even say it. Just present it to them because yeah. it is yeah. delicious. And if you could only smell what we smell here, mm -hmm. it is to die for. And there is, is a so there is a good. point on the cauliflower, babe. I remember because we actually, you know, thank goodness we had a nice, uh, friendly cousin down the street that we had to get a processor, yeah. a food processor, processor because. Kim, doing her research, understood that a blender might make it a little gummy, correct? Right. So it's better to chop it with the processor versus mm -hmm. a blender. So this that's, a, like that's a foodie tip it. we wanted to make sure yes. people knew. <laughs> um, and then real quick, yeah. Dr. Simons, if you can read yeah. off, Martha's got a question for you and Michelle, if you want to read that okay. off. Yeah. Martha, thanks for the question. Uh, let's My see. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. See, Martha's asking, uh, let's see. So at most gatherings and dinner parties, they all start with happy hour. Mm. It's not always polite or possible to bring your own mm. suggestions. Well, I'm, are you? Uh, yeah, That's I a good question. Yeah, okay. Yeah. What do you think she's asking about there? The food items or the drink items? I would say probably both. So okay. when it comes to the food, uh -huh. if there's really no option that is friendly to the to the way you eat, um, just have a, a cocktail, yeah. right? Just forego yeah. the the food if that's an option. If someone is, you know, paying attention enough to say something and you feel uncomfortable, um, what makes it casual? Yeah is that you can just have a tiny bit, if that is what makes you feel comfortable and the people around you that you're with socially feel comfortable, just like you had mentioned a minute ago, if you're at someone's house and they serve you a little yeah. bit of potatoes, right. you don't say, oh no, 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 I don't eat that. Which you right. can if you feel comfortable doing that, right. but if, you, if right. you'd if rather just have a little bit, that's okay, yeah. that is right. okay. No rules were broken, right? You didn't do anything wrong. I try to, uh, well, you wanna slow down the digestion of whatever it is. So um, fat and protein slow down the digestion of carbohydrate. So if, if it's something that's got flour, for example, in there, and this is part of the, um, you know, the cocktail hour, mm -hmm. you, you want to try to mix it with something that's got fat in there. Okay. Like so, meat and cheese. Right, exactly. Olives. To slow it down. Nuts. If, so are if you can't avoid the thing, yeah, mm -hmm. like Michelle says, you want to try to, a small amount, and then you want to try to mix it with some fat to mm -hmm. try to slow down the digestion. Mm -hmm. You want to avoid the situation where you get this precipitous spike in your blood sugar and therefore the precipitous spike in the insulin level. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, as an extreme example, I uh, knew an individual. Oh, I, I still know this individual. And this individual, he uh, is very serious about keto. He was a little more rulesy than mm -hmm. not so casual, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, which is okay too. But. Yeah, but but you know, I mean, he had this job where he didn't want to be offensive, and he, sales was the deal. And sometimes he'd get in these scenarios where he had to he had to be in these scenarios, and it, you know, the sale was dependent on fitting in, right? So he carried packets of mayonnaise oh. in his suit <laughs> in his suit jacket, right? What's Did wrong that, with that? that and, and then what he'd do is if he had to eat some carbohydrate thing, he'd eat a small amount and then he'd run to the bathroom hmm? and break up with a packet of mayonnaise <laughs> and shoot a couple of packets of mayonnaise down to slow down the digest. And he would always measure his ketones the next morning to see if he was still in ketosis. You see? And he would always he would always email me to tell me yeah. I'm still in ketosis. Yeah. I used my mayonnaise trick last night. It works. Well, that's an example of how that <laughs> works. And I I don't suggest you do anything like that. I mean, if you want to do that, that's fine. But mm -hmm. I, I personally don't want to have to go around shooting packs of mayonnaise yeah. in my mouth. But right. that's an example of fat slowing down the mm -hmm. digestion of the carbohydrate, preventing the insulin spike. So that might be a strategy. Yeah, that's an excellent that, point. that you would use. In the event that you had you found yourself having to have a small amount of carbohydrate mm -hmm. at one of these um, you know happy hour situations, mm -hmm. I like your idea. Uh, get get a low carb uh, alcoholic beverage and nurse that thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it occupies your hand. Absolutely. You, you walk around talking to people and you use your other hand like I'm doing here to demonstrate. Mm -hmm. So then you can't you know you got an alcoholic beverage in one hand, the other hand you're yeah. shaking hands or do. You don't want to shake hands, I guess, during the, the virus sort of thing, but uh, the, uh, you know, to demonstrate, mm -hmm. talk about things, and point and stuff. The idea is you don't want to, you want to avoid it from picking up food items. Right. Okay. So despite what yeah. we uh, are accustomed to, you don't have to have food in your hand. That's right. All, all the time. time yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. All the time, yeah. period, or at a social <laughs> gathering. Right. It's right. okay. <laughs> Most of the time, you are more self-conscious about what you think other people think about you than what they're yeah. worried about themselves. Uh, yeah, they're not right. thinking about what you're eating or drinking. Right. You know? Yeah, I assure you, they don't yeah. go home and say, gee, Michelle didn't have any food in her right hand. She's walking around <laughs> with a drink during the cocktail hour, no. right? And yeah. One of the things I also do when, I go, when I'm going to a party, I will take a couple of keto dishes with me instead of taking a bottle of wine or, mm -hmm. or something of that sort. I will take a couple of keto dishes and I will have a little bit of that and whatever my hostess has, but at least I know I will have something that would be suitable for me. So there's the always that idea. too. And yeah. When it's an option. Yes. Yeah. Bring your own if it's an option. Yeah. You know, there's always the blame the doctor strategy. It was like, oh, yeah. You could tell your host, hey, mm -hmm. um, look, ahead of time, um, my doctor, uh, because I have a blood sugar problem or whatever, he wants me on this diet where I don't want the carbohydrates. You mind if I bring a little something I can mm -hmm. add during this time? It's not, not offensive. I got to keep my blood sugar under control. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, maybe I'll bring a little snack. I won't make a big deal of it, but yeah. uh, I won't be partaking in the dessert or, or, you know, whatever it is the thing is. Yeah. And Michelle, there's a, yeah. another question there. Just to oh. clarify, when someone's actually on ketosis, if you want to go ahead and scoot up there to, to see that, guys, we've got the screen up here, um, but we need to make sure that we see it. So, Michelle has a question for Michelle. Um, well, where are we? Right here, come on. The, screen. the last one. Yeah. Oh, okay. You go in on a keto, doesn't it take a certain amount of time for your body to get into ketosis? You're going in and out. Is your body going to burn the fat? Michelle, that is a very good question. So the, the time that I had spent in keto was usually like at least three to six months at a time. Um, I don't go in and out each week, um, but when I do decide to go in, I will spend an extended period of time, three to six months or so, and then I will come out. Um, there is still fat burning that can happen even if you're not in ketosis. So you can lose weight on mm -hmm. and lose fat on eating styles that are not keto. Uh, however, for uh, for myself, I wasn't doing keto as much for weight loss as for the health benefits. And so being able to cycle in and, and get those benefits and then coming back out, it was not a problem. Now I do have patients who don't do as well. So to your point, you know, cycling in out, it can be difficult for people who their goal with the diet is to lower their blood pressure and to lower their blood sugar and to lower their body weight, um, then it can be trickier and you may need to be in longer and it is individualized. So 
uh, talk to one of us, you know, at a visit if you're worried about how that would work if you didn't want to be in all the time or some of the time. Um, how do you handle patients who maybe spend some of the time or cycle or what have you, Dr. Simons? Yeah, so the, um, one of the things when you get out of it, right, mm -hmm. one of the things I found helps you get back in faster. If you, if you think about the physiology of it, you've got this big storehouse. What your, your body is doing is it's taking the carbohydrate that you eat, breaking it down to glucose and storing it back in your muscles and your liver. Mm -hmm. And then it's breaking that down as it has need for blood sugar over the next day or two. And that's keeping you from getting back into the fat burning. And um, perhaps getting up the next morning and doing some exercise. Mm -hmm. That'll exhaust those glucose stores. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, your body has, oh, I got, I got to find an energy source. Mm -hmm. And now I can't draw on that stored glucose because you've used it during 30 or 45 minutes of exercise. The following morning and you start drawing on those fat stores again mm -hmm. and you get back into ketosis faster mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um, look it doesn't take long for uh, marathoners to get into ketosis right they they start I mean yeah. they, they don't want it. and if they're, if they're not sitting there drinking sugary drinks mm -hmm. during the run mm -hmm. they get into ketosis mm -hmm. pretty you start making ketones pretty quick mm -hmm. right so uh, that might be a tip to kind of uh, for those of you who um, her joints are, are well enough to do this. Just do some exercise the following morning after you know you get out of ketosis. Mm -hmm. This will help you get back into it faster. Yes. Yeah. One of the things our patients too are always asking about is it total carbs or net carbs? Mm -hmm. Like what is the amount mm -hmm. of carbs that you need to get into ketosis? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think there that's something that you could probably answer, but you know it also I think depends on how much exercise they're doing, but also what works for them mm -hmm. um, so what would you say to that total carbs net carbs i just think it's person dependent mm -hmm. um, and I how, agree. how insulin resistant that they exactly. are exactly mm -hmm. some people really cannot do net carbs mm -hmm. and, um, and on the spectrum of hey um i'm somewhat insulin resistant to i already have type 2 diabetes right. you may find if you already have type 2 diabetes the idea of net carbs really doesn't work too well mm -hmm. And so um, you're just very carbohydrate intolerant. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that uh, only you can know this by experimentation. Exactly. And I think that's where it comes to where you have to be very dil diligent about reading labels mm -hmm. as well and making sure that you're doing your total carbs. Well, you know, and here's the other thing. So I don't, um, I know this may come as a surprise. And maybe most of you, don't know this, but there are liars in the world. And no there way. are liars in no. the labeling. No way. And they'll say there's X number of net carbs. And I'm going to tell you what, unless someone calls them on the carpet and tests their stuff, they get away with the lie until someone does. And That's you may right. end up thinking that their product only has four net carbs when in, in fact it has a lot more than that. And you always have to be suspicious of that. If you can't ever get into ketosis eating their product, it may be that they're not being truthful about what's in there. Yeah. And you need to tell me, look, the way that they do that sort of thing is they, te they do a test batch, which they submit one time. And it may be in the test batch that the stuff really had four net carbs, but in the day-to-day -day operation of the mm -hmm. business and the product that's being packaged, it's not really like that. Yeah. And they're relying the on buyer beware. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And another quick point for we have a great question from Denise is um, that it's also individualized the type of carbohydrate. So net carbohydrates apply not only to fiber and vegetables, but to sugar alcohols in protein products. So some folks mm -hmm. can tolerate having, you know, a, some Vidalia onion and some shaved carrot in their salad, but if they eat, say, an Atkins bar or something of the like, it, it's not. It can be the same net carbs, but their body will tolerate it differently That's correct. when it comes to their level of ketosis, their ability to stay in ketosis, how good they feel, their cravings. So that the type of carbohydrate does matter, not just yeah. the number, but the type as well. That's right. Yeah, that's correct. Kind of like saying car. 
Right. And that car just kind of like the same car. Right. So a lot of different types of cars. A lot of, of options cars. out there. That's right, yeah. Some are great, some are not so yeah. great. Right, exactly. <laughs> Sneaking in here, because yeah. Denise has been patiently waiting. Thank I you, brought Denise. my laptop over, so it says, uh, Denise, thank you for your question. It says, there are so many suggestions on how to start keto. It sometimes gets overwhelming as to what is the correct way to start. I love mm -hmm. the variety on what you can eat on keto, but for example, in order to go into ketosis, is it necessary uh, starting out to eat pork, i.e. bacon, because it is high in fat, as well as for the first week or so uh, to have a keto shake as a meal replacement in order to go into ketosis quicker. Denise, I hope I read that, correct, that question correctly for you. Thank you, Denise. That's an excellent question. I think we touched a little bit on getting into ketosis quicker. Um, I would say that the short answer is no, you don't have to do bacon or pork products to start out with if you, if you do not wish to. Even though they are a good source of fat, there are plenty of other things that can be sort of induction to help you get into ketosis. And then the second um, second part, um, you also don't need to do supplements or shakes right. or products. You can use real whole food for the whole thing. And it can be, can be meat free. We all like meat, so we meat is delicious, we have it, we enjoy it, but if that is not something you're interested in, or pork specifically is not something um, you want to use, that's not a requirement in order to get in ketosis or to get in keto faster. So yeah, you just gotta, when your insulin level drops, you'll get into ketosis. It can be fasting. So, that's right, yeah. Fasting will do it. Yep, that can so, be a, a quicker way for some folks. Yeah, a lot of famous, Diets in the past started with a 24 hour fast, for example. That don't get you into ketosis really quick. Again, it works on that principle I talked about with the exercise. You exhaust your glucose stores in your liver and your muscle pretty quick. Uh, you then don't make any insulin to lower your blood sugar because you're not doing anything to raise your blood sugar. The insulin level comes down and you start burning fat. And so, uh, as long as you're not eating things that raise your blood sugar, um, you'll get into ketosis. Mm -hmm. It's just when once that insulin. Let's say you have a really. The issue is how long it takes. So right. if you really have, if your insulin levels sky high, starting, it may take you a little longer mm -hmm. for it to come on down. Mm -hmm. And so you you won't know uh, initially. But uh, either way, as long as you've cut out the, you know, uh, you cut out the carbohydrate, um, you're going to find that you go into ketosis, whether or not. You're using some particular product or eating bacon or right. fasting or whatever it is, right? Right. And if you do want something that's simple in the beginning, eggs, whole yeah. eggs. Mm -hmm. You cannot go wrong with whole eggs. They are so nutrient dense. They are almost the perfect ratio of fat and protein yeah. uh, for the body to feel satiated and stay satiated or full for longer. Um, so doing multiple meals of eggs could be a great way if you're really looking for a quicker, easier way to safely get in and you don't want to fast, eggs are a great way to do that. That, that is correct. If we had a breakfast, like a brunch virtual party, there would be eggs. We could totally do that. Yeah, we we could totally do that. Be eggs. Well, let's, be yes. let's jump yes. into some more food and I know we've got a cocktail that we owe folks. Yes. So why don't I have Tina and Michelle get ready for the cocktail? <laughs> And speaking of cocktails, I want to go back to the ha the happy hour conversation because I thought when I heard happy hour, it meant that we needed to talk about like beverages. So just a quick shout out again, our friends over at Wegmans helped us uh, prepare our, our grocery list. And when we asked for keto friendly uh, beers, they actually went on their Wegmans app and started telling us all the net carbs that are out there. So we ended up with Yingling's Flight, which is 2.6 net carbs. I know you had a favorite one from yeah. Luke Bryant that we couldn't find. Yeah. Um, and then of course, you can always go with the Reed's uh, Ginger Beer, um, zero calories, zero sugar. Um, Virgil makes some diet um, opportunities if you don't want alcohol, but you know, you don't have to not have fun. Um, you can, whether you do alcohol or you do um, non-alcoholic. There are some fun, you know, exciting things out there in the world of the diet drinks that are out there. And then of course, in light beers. And that, that's correct. Many light beers are really low in carbs. Uh, the key is don't consume them in excess. Exactly. And uh, most regular wine is low in carbs. So, you know, the regular reds like Merlot or Cabernet um, or the white wines like Pinot Grigio or Chardonnay, they're fine. Uh, the sweet ones, um, 
uh, like the Muscadine wines and stuff. I'd stay away North from North Carolina those. State. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. The, uh, and then, look, on the liquors, you don't want to add sweet stuff to it. Right. Right. And uh, so the drinks that we're making here are not going to have sweet stuff added to it. They'll have yeah. sweetness um, with very yeah. approved that's uh, right. yeah. low calorie, that's right. low that's right. we won't have sugar You're that's correct. Right. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Um, hey, real quick, uh, Valicia, I just want to say that there's no difference between the men and the women on the regimen. It can be the same uh, in terms of getting into ketosis. You don't have to do anything different. Uh, there's no real uh, di difference between the sexes on that. Um, I know you'd asked a question about that. Yep. Um, Is it true? I mean, yeah. I know I hear lose weight faster. They, Whenever right. me and my wife yeah. are on some type of regimen, yeah. she always gets mad because I lose weight faster. Right. <laughs> well, it is true that men have a and It's not because I'm doing a better job, I promise you. Men have a higher percentage of lean muscle mass because they make more testosterone. As a general rule, that means that they're probably going to lose weight a little quicker. But when you compare the percentages of the weight loss as a, uh, you know, if, if you look at the percentage of weight loss as a total, uh, as a percentage of your total body weight, it, in most cases, it's very, very similar in men and women. Okay. If you remember the biggest loser, they wouldn't take just the weight loss. They compare it to your total body weight. Right. And the men and women compare very favorably. Right. So I just say you're in a race against yourself. Don't compare yourself to your spouse. Yep. Yeah. So I wanted to ask a quick question as we, as, as again, quick reminder to the folks that are there at home watching this virtual dinner, hopefully you're eating something delicious as well. Maybe you're trying some recipes that you found on Casual Keto. Um, remember, we do have a $75 grocery Wegmans gift card that we're gonna give you guys. So if you see something that we've created that you'd love to uh, just give a shout out on. We are going to pick a winner tonight before the show is over and send you a $75 like a turkey car. meatball. Yeah, like the turkey meatball. Um, I do have just a quick little thing on my charcuterie board. I don't want to keep gloating over my charcuterie board. One thing that I would say when you're throwing a dinner party, you know, there are lots of rules on the proper etiquette and the proper way to do a charcuterie. Um, I would say do with what you like. You know, go for the cheeses that you like. You know, Wegmans was really helpful because they have a, a, a cheese department that really kind of helped me understand. I know my wife encouraged me to stay away from the soft cheeses. Normally, when you do a Shakiri board, you have soft and hard cheeses. But the hard, the soft cheeses tended to have more um, sugary or sugars in it. So um, that meant the, the, the carbs were a lot higher. Uh, so we really went with harder cheeses. I've got Gruyere. We've got... Um, some uh, asagio, we've got, um, you know, some blue cheese, and then of course the meats, you know, we just really went for flavor. Um, these salamis that we chose today uh, just really went with flavor. Um, there is one Dr. Simon that I want you to try. I believe it is this one right here, and I'm going to pull my little notebook out because it is, where's my notebook? It is actually a Tennessee whiskey mm. cheese. Yeah. So I wanted you to try that. Um, for those at home, I just wanted to let you know that if you say Tennessee whiskey, you're always going to get this gentleman's attention. Is that, that, really that, good. Is that the Tennessee whiskey one? I think it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So again, with charcuterie, you can have fun with it. You know, obviously you keep mm. the, the... I taste the charcoal mellowing in there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so with, with these kind of boards, just have fun with them. You know, the harder the cheeses, I think, are going to be the ones that are the safest when it comes to your carb count. Um, and then, mac, you know, mix them up with some real nice salty... Uh, salamis or some uh, summer sausages uh, are great options there. Um, it just makes it fun and, you know, just find something to throw it on and everyone just has a ball with it. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so good. So I see that Denise is asking, or she's actually choosing the fudge or the any other keto. I like how Denise works here. She's thinking, okay, he's talking about charcuterie a lot. He's talking about sand a lot. However, the fudge, we're going to get to the fudge in a second. Um, that's really, really an exciting recipe. I know that we went between the cheesecake, which is a very popular recipe that we have online, along with the fudge. And we ended up choosing the fudge because um, as we were pre preparing a lot of things, we wanted to make sure that we had a quick, easy recipe that we could do that is elegant and a showstopper. And I think the fudge really became a showstopper for us. Um, so Kim, do you want to talk a little bit about the fudge? Are you, oh, you guys are ready for the cocktail? Oh, yeah. All right. If you guys are ready for the cocktail, here's our wonderful um, bartenders. Uh, oh, one these. for you. There you go. Wow. Oh, do I get one? You? Fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's a cocktail. I'm going to hold this up to the camera here. Yeah. 
You guys see this? Yeah. 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 All right. So we need we need you guys to talk oh, us through it. This, Tina, do you want to talk us through this? Well, it, it's very ironic that I'm talking you through this because I am not a drinker. So no, you're no, right. I have to make this part of it. There. I'm a foodie, not a drinker. But cheers to thank cheers. you. Cheers. Okay. So cheers, everybody. Cheers. 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 Congratulations. Yeah. Five thousand. Yeah. 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 Going back, we should have started the show with this. Absolutely. Yes, yes. So this is very simple. This is a blueberry puree with swerve. Okay. Um, this is um, vodka and a little bit of lime juice mm -hmm. and then ginger beer. Yeah. So you're going to mix the... Um, it's like a sugar-free ginger beer. Yeah, yeah. absolutely oh, sugar-free, yeah. okay. yes. Mm. So you're going to mix the swerve with the blueberries. Um, okay. You're going to take a little bit of lime juice, a little bit of vodka, put it in your shaker with some ice. Put it in your glass. Oh, and you can rim the glass with some um, cinnamon as well. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to pour your ginger beer, and then you're going to just <laughs> add some fancy lime and blueberries. Yeah. And away you go. Yeah. That's right. That's blueberries the right there. Yeah. The lime, and then the, it's <laughs> rimmed with the cinnamon. Yeah, right. The whole rundown. So yeah. Swerve is uh, a yeah, brand yeah. for um, a type of natural sweetener called erythritol. That's right. So erythritol is... An alternative to stevia, but many people are familiar with the product Truvia. It's the green and white one. That is a mixture of erythritol and stevia. And what's nice about erythritol is it doesn't have um, an aftertaste that can happen with stevia. There are some stevia products that are very, very good. I like the brand New Naturals. I also like Sweet Leaf. Um, but Swerve is great uh, for an erythritol option, and they have confectioners so they have a powdered version totally sugar free natural alternative they have a brown sugar option and then they have a granulated option so so good for baking for keto baking as well as things like this and then we have a guaccini for the martini yeah. so this is very simple this is guacamole thank you and we've got um your bacon in there we've got onions in there we've got cilantro in there mm. and these are parmesan crisps and it this is the most simple thing ever you just dip this right in here and away you go and i will bring you all one <laughs> and those, those crisps those can be like a cracker i think a lot of folks miss crunchy on keto but things like this it's it's seeds and parmesan. Did you get those at Wegmans yeah. as well? Yes. Yeah. 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 They have those at Wegmans and So there are some those. great keto cracker yeah. options. So when you do want something crunchy or a vehicle to kind of scoop something up, <laughs> something like that is absolutely perfect. And Woo! just for those those folks, those foodies out there that love to entertain their friends <laughs> and they're thinking, okay, what can I do that will be a showstopper or a wow? You know, guacamole is an easy, you know, mm -hmm. get your avocados, mix it up, put your favorite ingredients in there, um, you. but you know, throw it in a martini glass and then grab that bacon, grab a nice mm. Parmesan crisp and it turns into an elegant little uh, snack or appetizer or dish. Almost feels too fancy to eat, yeah. which is what you want your guests to think. It's not too fancy. <laughs> but but it's not. <laughs> All right, so I've got someone that says that there's a question that we missed on energy, Michelle. Um, so I wanted to make sure that we, we, we talked about that. So Michelle, again, um, has a question that says, it seems like I stay tired a lot when I'm on keto. Do you have any recommendations to help with my energy level? Uh, Michelle, sorry we missed that question earlier, so I wanted to make sure we came back to it. Thank you so much for being here, Michelle. I love that you're here. Um, so energy with keto has mostly to do with electrolytes, specifically sodium. So this is salty and delicious. This cracker has a lot of salt, the guac has salt, the bacon has salt. I feel very energetic salted. right now. Yeah, so salt is very, very important. When insulin levels drop, when you are making more ketones and insulin's coming down, your kidneys will release sodium mm -hmm. and other electrolytes such as magnesium and potassium. And if those electrolytes are not replaced, or if enough fluid is not replaced, like if you get dehydrated, that can leave you feeling really washed out, fatigued, you can get muscle cramps, you can get headaches. Some people call this the keto flu. Uh, other people, they just say, I don't feel my best, I feel drained. And that is almost always 
electrolytes. Always want to make sure you're hydrated as well. And sometimes, depending on what's going on with a person, if, if they're under a lot of stress and they're under eating and they're not sleeping, they may actually need to eat a little bit more. You know, even though they're keto, they may actually need a little bit more regular eating or a little bit higher calorie. Um, not sure if that's the case, if that's individualized, but say salt, hydration, mm -hmm. and make sure you are eating salt. enough if there's a lot of other stuff going on. Yeah, and that's you said, it's a lot, it's a lot more salt than you probably think you need. Mm -hmm. um, you can drink broth. We have people who are really struggling saying, well, I can't put any more salt on my food. I don't want, I don't want it to taste like that. I don't want it to taste too salty. You can drink broth. Um, there's even salt tabs that I have some patients take if they really just dislike the flavor of salt. They can yes. take salt tabs, which you can buy. Uh, they're usually for athletes, right? Mm -hmm. But you can just swallow yeah. that, and that can help you feel better. You probably have a lot of experience yes. with this. And as also, well. we do have at the clinic, we have the Metagenics line that we have spoke about um, very early on. And we do have a magnesium and potassium mixed together, and that way you don't have to take a bunch of other pills, you just take that one. And we love we love Metagenics. Yes. Uh, we've had them in the office for many, many years now, and their magnesium and potassium is one of the best that I've ever taken. So that is a good thing mm -hmm. if you do find that you're needing that, if your electrolytes are just not in balance. Mm -hmm. You know, then signs of magnesium, potassium, a little bit more than fatigue, I find, mm -hmm. is more muscle-related or headaches. So muscle cramps or like tension, magnesium and potassium, but magnesium especially can help so much. I take magnesium every day, multiple forms, multiple times a day. I'm a big magnesium person. And when I'm fully in ketosis, my need for salt and magnesium and potassium really like mm -hmm. quadruples. I mean, it, I need so much more of that to really feel my best. And I learned that by doing it, you know, over and over, but you, know, you may just need, Michelle, a lot more of those electrolytes that we just talked about. I wanted to jump in. So we had a question that said, what is the ginger beer that has zero sugar? So I'm going to come mm. up into the screen. So I'm a big fan of Reed's, if you guys are familiar. So Reed's makes a lot of great sodas that are out there. They're all natural sodas. Um, you can get them at Whole Foods, you can get them at Paris Teeters, you know, depending, and of course Wegmans. Um, but this one is a zero sugar. Um, Super delicious. It made that cocktail just mm -hmm. sore, right? Mm -hmm. You're gonna do this. Is a, did we say what this was? This was a blueberry mule. Correct? That's right. A blueberry uh, mule. So as you know, if you're doing the classic mule, you're going to need a good ginger uh, beer, and Reeves makes a fantastic one. I wanted to make sure um, that we talked about that. So Kristen, it looks like you had a great question, and we got it over at Wegmans, which of course you can win a seventy-five dollar gift card today if you say Dell did a great job. <laughs> and I'm sure everyone caught that, but just to reiterate, yeah. this is fruit, but this is a blueberry. So you can have uh, blueberry berries, most of you can. Again, it's kind of individualized, but many people can still consume berries in reasonable quantities. And blueberries, I find, are, are especially useful because they are so high in fiber and antioxidants, mm -hmm. and, and specifically, the color of them a lot of us don't get this color in our diet, no, do we? No, we do not. Right, it's this deep blue, like purple color, it's kind of hard to find. You can get purple cabbage, you can get purple asparagus, but often blueberries are where it's at, so you can eat the rainbow if you so choose. Mm -hmm. Get a lot of green, get red, you can see the pink from the salmon, but blueberries is where you get this beautiful purple blue. All right, I want to give a quick shout out to Jan, who also joined us on the show. Jan, thanks for joining us. It says. That looks really good. Um, so guys, we're nearing the, um, we're about to near close to the half hour mark where we need to start answering our questions here. So we've been, we've been in an hour, now we've got an hour and a half, or we've got a half an hour to go. So I wanna start throwing out some questions. So I'm gonna be the interviewer, if you will. Okay. And of course, if you guys have more questions, keep them coming. Um, I've got a producer in my ear that'll let me know to turn to the screen real quick. But I do wanna just throw out some questions that were already sent in. Uh, from some of your great folks. Obviously, every other Monday we do a Ask Me Anything that you guys do. So tomorrow you're scheduled for one, but we're going to actually rebroadcast the show tonight, tomorrow, mm -hmm. because we're going to have a keto dinner virtual hangover. <laughs> uh, so, and hangover meaning out of the food. 
Um, so tomorrow we'll rebroadcast with oh, AMA. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry, we didn't put that much in for you. Because um, you have patience to see more. Um, but it, there are some questions that came in. So these would have been questions that would have probably spilled over into our AMA. But definitely if you are liking what you're seeing today, um, every other Saturday or every other Monday, you guys are in the office and you're answering your questions. Okay. Um, so I wanted to jump in and I've got Jenny from Raleigh. So we're in North Carolina here. So we've got some folks here in North Carolina sending in some questions. Um, Jenny said, and some of these questions may have already been addressed by other folks that have joined us live. Jenny just wants to simply know how long should someone really be on keto? There's absolutely no limit. I can just tell you that this it's always kind of shocks people when I say it, right? But uh, the modern American diet is the historical exception. It is the fad diet. So Jenny, the diet that you were raised on is historically very, very abnormal. The keto diet was always what human beings were on. For millions of years, that's what human beings were on. They didn't have, there was no Paris Teeter or Wegmans, Wegmans or whatever. Mm -hmm. They didn't have any of that. They didn't have any factories that were fine food. You killed animals, you ate what came from animals. When I say that, I mean things like eggs and cheese, for example, right? And you ate what you could grow. And believe it or not, fruit did not used to be sweet. It had not been genetically modified, and human beings very rarely ate it because it was not sweet. It wasn't very palatable. Okay. So the majority of what they ate was vegetables and animals. The kind of grain was genetically very, very different and um, they couldn't refine it. So they smashed it together with stones and they would cook it over an open fire in most cases. Mm -hmm. It was coarse, it was like eating a piece of cardboard. The digestion was so slow, it was incapable of getting this spike in your blood sugar and insulin. Mm -hmm. uh, and so um, with, you paired that with the physical activity level of human beings who didn't have automobiles and all of these nice things, mm -hmm. and they lived in ketosis. There was really no such thing other than this. Mm -hmm. It is the modern American diet that is historically the uh, anomaly. And well, I might say that as, yeah. as an experiment, the results are now in, and it is an abject <laughs> <That's terrible>. failure. <laughs> all right? It's a failure, yeah. right? Yeah, it's, uh, mm. it's not looking good. No. Yeah. So I just want to point out, if you do join our AMAs every other Monday, this is the truth that you're going to hear. Every Monday, there's always a question, and it gets stuck, it gets stuck, riled up into that modern American diet <laughs> conversation. So, now, I, I just want to qualify. This. Yeah, yeah. I am an American through and through. Okay, I, you don't see me. You know, people are trying to. This, this is a pet peeve. People are beating down the borders to get in, not to get out. I'm not trying to leave to go anywhere. Else. So, okay, don't don't get me wrong. I love America. I fought for our country. Right. I, I believe it's that important, but. I just believe you ought to be honest with people about this food business mm -hmm. and how it affects their health, right? I mean, our system ought to be based on the truth, you knowing the truth, and then making making informed decisions, right? That's just the name of the game. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. No, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to bash our country, right? It's, like, it's not anti-American. <laughs> yeah, it's anti-American yeah. diet. I'm not, I'm not going out to, I'm not going to burn down anything or start, start a violent protest of any kind over the food. Don't work <laughs> No more oranges. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So Mike from Durham sent in a question that says, um, "Won't my workout suffer yeah. without carbs?" It's a Mike's got work. a really good point here. Yeah. yeah. And I can yeah. attest, they, they will are. not. Yes. They <laughs> will not. Okay. And I think anybody who knows me knows I'm a big gym girl and have been for oh, yeah. over thirty years. And you will have more energy than you ever thought possible. Mm -hmm. yep. All your blood sugar stays stable. You don't have the highs and lows. You can get through your workout. You're not going to be tired. You're not going to need a nap during the day to get through it. Mm -hmm. You're going to sleep well. You're going to be strong. You're going to be stronger than ever. And um, I am here to tell you, no, that will not happen. It'll be the reverse. It'll yeah. be the you reverse. Put those guns up there? <laughs> Well, you will have more energy. Say than something ever. to Mike. Mike, if when you make this switch, uh, that during that first few weeks, it, it it'll be difficult. It'll be Your hard. body has to adapt yeah. to the to being able to directly burn uh, fat and convert it to an energy source. 
to arrive where Tina is talking about. Okay, and you do arrive there. This is uh, all the great triathlete champions uh, and, and the, the, the mega tri the, the, you know, the ones where they're actually running 50 miles. Okay, uh, they, they, these sort of guys and gals, they're all, um, they're, they're all really low carvers. And, and because your fat represents an energy depot that's much greater than your stored sugar. Okay. And so they can go for so much longer. Mm -hmm. So they train themselves to be fat burners. Mm -hmm. But that initial switch over is a time you've got to allow your body some time to adjust. And you may not be able to do the kinds of workouts that you're accustomed to. And you may need to give yourself some more time to recover. You may find that during those times that you uh, have to give yourself some additional carbohydrate. I, I say that, you know, instead of being below, say, 30 grams of carbohydrate a day, you might have to be at, at 50 to 75 a day during that time. But after you become adjusted uh, over a period of a few weeks, you, you will arrive to the point at where Tina is talking about where you can eat a very, very carbohydrate restricted diet. Your body will uh, begin to draw on your its fat stores and very rapidly be able to burn those mm -hmm. and convert them to energy. And because you have more stored fat than you have sugar, uh, your workouts can become much longer and more intense. Mm -hmm. so less, and you, you have less soreness the next day as well. You recover much quicker. But mm -hmm. uh, Mike, give the office a call if you feel you need help getting to that point. Mm -hmm. We can help you get there. Um, and that's where we want you know you to be if that's where you're trying to lower your carbohydrates but you are struggling give us a call and we'll help you through that yeah and yeah. we may discuss electro electrolytes with you again as well especially with people who work out a lot sweat a lot your need for electrolytes is even higher uh, it's higher with keto and it's going to be even higher when you're doing a lot of, of fitness activity so that could really help to to ease that transition that we just talked about yeah, and I love that Mike sent in a question about working out because when I hear workout, I think of chocolate. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and grab these chocolates here. Before we go into the next question, I'm going to have Kim come on up and talk us through our, our fudge here. This is keto chocolate fudge. We can't, we can't miss the opportunity to talk about this recipe here. Yeah, so this is um, basically cream cheese. Everybody grab a piece. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Everybody get a piece? Goodness gracious. There we go. And I'll say no. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, go ahead and talk us through the recipe. All right. Oh. Um, so basically, you pan, you melt butter and cream cheese, and then you actually will mix in, um, it's just basically a cocoa powder, um, unsweetened cocoa powder. Um, and then you mix it all together, put it in a pan, smooth it out really pretty, and then you uh, stick it in the freezer for about 30 minutes and pull it out. Now, while it's in the freezer, you actually are going to be melting some coconut oil um, and some more of the cocoa powder. And that's actually the topping. So it kind of tastes a little bit kind of like almond joyish, yes. kind of dark chocolate. Yes. That's kind of the taste I got from that. Yeah. So, so very easy again. And what's the sugar substitute? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. That is actually swerve. Uh, yeah. The granular swerve. Mm -hmm. So because it, it is sweet. Yes, it is yeah, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> and that's got the most important part. Yeah. This melts in your mouth. Yeah, this is super decadent. In your mouth. It's unreal. Blissful. Yes. Um, I don't think I've tried one. Let me try. We feel like we're cheating, <laughs> but we're not. <laughs> right. Right. No, these actually have one um, one carb per square. So, yep. yeah. These are great because you cut them up in these little squares, and it looks little, but... Mm -hmm. It is so satisfying. Mm -hmm. So if you really want a little something chocolatey or a little something sweet exactly. at night after dinner, have a square or two of this. Yeah. You should be set. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're rich too. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it goes a long way. You can also make it as a, a nut fudge. You can grind up some oh, nuts and put idea. in there mm -hmm. and that'll give you a little idea. bit of extra fat in there. And oh, this is definitely yeah. thank you, Kim. Oh, you're very welcome. welcome. That's all right. It's fantastic. Oh, Everything. Yeah, absolutely. Please yeah. give next to Dr. Simon as well. <laughs> well Dr. Simon, we know we're here. You have a question here from Mary. Mary says she wants to know what's your go-to snack when you're on ketosis. Do you have a go-to snack? I've got several go-to mm -hmm. snacks. Um, so um, I'll preface this by saying that I tend to eat a snack as a meal in ketosis rather than because I don't do a lot of snacking in between meals, okay. right? So, um, but 
I'll, I'll uh, I have several things that I, one of the things I, I get really busy, so I like to keep things around that are quick. And um, I always keep a supply in, in the refrigerator that's nearest to me of cheese and then meat of some kind so that I can just roll it up and eat it on the go. Right. <laughs> that's always I just just <laughs> a mobile. How do you call that board? You, what'd you say the name charcuterie? of the board? Charcuterie. Charcuterie board. Right. Um, a mobile charcuterie board. Yes. Um, yes. Um, but I also keep unsweetened almond butter around with a spoon. Um, I find that that is the fat in there is sustaining, like Michelle says. And um, I don't have to, I don't, you can, if you wanted to sweeten it with something, uh, I always keep a little uh, grain stevia in my uh, cabinet and just add some to it, you know, or we keep some uh, truvia or something like that. You could. Um, and then um, I, for crunchy things, I keep two, two different crunchy things around when I have this sort of chip thing going on. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the first is, uh, is pork rinds. And the second would be, and, and there's various flavors on those. And I kind of go through, you know, the salt and pepper phase for a while, and then I'll go through the uh, salt and vinegar phase for a while, and then the barbecue uh, phase for a while. But either way, I just keep it around. Uh, and a lot of times I'll keep some Tabasco sauce around. I like to have some little hot sauce on it. And then, um, and because uh, it's that salt thing, it's kind of mm -hmm. like the salt, yeah, a little salt. fire, a little mm -hmm. salt mm -hmm. fire. And then um, I like keeping around some parm. So just like the ones we had here, oh, yes. so there's a few different brands and, and I'll kind of rotate around just depending on where I'm at and where I'm shopping and what they have, but they're very versatile and um, they keep for a while, you know, and they, they all have a, some sort of sealing system so that, you know, you can, um, they, they don't go, you know, they're good for a couple of weeks. Once mm -hmm. you go. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I know it's interesting. We talked about what's your go-to snack. Um, that Mary sent in for a question because I know when people come to your practice, yeah. you guys have a pantry in the front. That is correct. And I know that I've heard folks rave about your Quest chips that, yeah. that are available yeah, in your office. Yeah, very popular. Um, we have some actually in our house because my wife likes que yeah. uh, Quest chips. Um, it's great for that guacamole if you don't want to do the bacon because you don't want to fry up the bacon or you don't want to bake up the bacon, just grab a Quest chip. Um, and then, of course, you've got your meat snacks. Yeah, we've got the sticks. meat sticks. Yeah. Like, these yeah. are easy, delicious. Mm -hmm. They're, they have a good amount of sodium in them, going yeah. back to yeah. being on the keto. Uh, they're filling. These are amazing. I always have these. These are probably one of my favorite snacks. And we do carry them in the office. Barbecue, buffalo, habanero, uh, pepper, a uh, couple more. I can't remember. But these are very, very satisfying. Applewood smoke. Like Applewood. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Applewood. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So, so these are my favorites. So folks that are, you know, patients that are coming on a regular basis, they you're like a one-stop shop. I know you have a pharmacy on, on site. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got a pantry. So folks don't sure. have to... You know, worry about how am I going to get through this? You know, I'm busy. I'm you know coming to the office or I'm doing a, a, a telemedicine sometimes. But but you are the go-to because you can if you don't want to go out and shop with a bunch of people, you can come right into an office that's safe absolutely. and just shop in the pantry. Yeah. Yes, yes. Absolutely. I will say, you know, Tina will verify that I'm pretty passionate about those quests. Yes. <laughs> nacho cheese. I thought yes. you were going to bring up those yes. quests. Quest, nacho yes. cheese. I, 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 I forgot about that because I go through at least a bag a day. And, um, you know, you say, well, what do you do when you don't? I'll just take that cheese. I talk about this yes. in the fridge. And I'll put it on those mm. Quest chips. Mm -hmm. Also good for nachos. Yeah. Yeah, it's very good, really good, good for nachos. Yeah, it's good. yeah, yeah. 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 All right, and we've got another question, and as we go into another question, you brought up the beef sticks, and I'm going to just point out these fantastic uh, bacon-wrapped shrimp. Oh, my goodness. Anybody um, yeah. that are made? I'm still living on the fudge right okay. now. Okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> We're all over the place. We've got dessert, we've got charcuterie, we've got salmon, we've got shrimp. All right, let me go into this question here. Uh, Dr. Simons. Yeah. Uh, said he rolls meat and cheese. If you have time to answer, um, yeah. is, is it deli turkey or... Chicken okay. Yes, it is. That's from uh, Denise. Sorry. Okay. So Denise, I don't get like the honey turkey. I get like the oven roasted turkey or one of those, right? So if you actually look at the packaging on that, 
in a serving of uh, say four ounces, it'll have like one gram of carbohydrate. So I think there probably is, if you look in there, something that's causing that one gram of carbohydrate, but it's just such a small amount. It's not anything to be worried about. But if you get the honey flavored stuff, teriyaki, any of that sort of thing, mm -hmm. yeah. that's where the, that sugar comes in, right? Yeah. So. And if you're gonna, I just wanna throw this out here. Yeah. If you are going to treat yourself, you know, board's head, obviously, with right. the, without the antibiotics mm -hmm. and all that, you know, that's that's going to get you, you know, really high quality meats, especially if you're trying to avoid all the unnecessary yeah. things. Applegate like Farms is another yeah. brand. Yes. Yeah, you could because some people just automatically equate deli meat with unhealthy, but there are some really good ones out there. Um, some really good cheeses as well. So okay, we've got another question from Florence. Florence, thanks for joining us. Um, what do you think about the Mission Low Carb Tortillas? Mm. That's a good Everybody just went, mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it It's a party now. It goes back to that question that you had, Tina, or that comment you had about the net carbs. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. that's exactly mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's individualized. Um, you may or may not tolerate them. I will say that I have seen more recently they have the folios, yeah. which mm -hmm. are uh, almost are those zero carb? I think the folios, yeah. like one? cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, just cheese. Yeah. And then there's also these other ones. Are they called collie wraps? There's some uh -huh. other ones yeah. in Costco yeah. that are made with like egg and cauliflower yeah. or something. So there are ones now out there that are wraps. They're not going to be exactly the same texture as a wheat wrap. Um, but what's nice about them is they are also completely grain free. So they're not just low carb, but they take the grains out completely. And they're made of veg vegetables and eggs and cheese, things that you're probably already eating on a keto diet. So there are alternatives, but if you can splurge every once in a while with a low carb mission tortilla and you personally still feel good and do well with your, you know, with your journey, that's okay. That's okay. There are alternatives too. Mm -hmm. Now I know on the uh, bi-weekly Ask Me Anything Facebook show that you guys host every other, every other Monday, um, this comes up a lot. So I'd, I'd love to just honor Julie from Raleigh who sent this question in, usually for AMA, but I think this would be a good time to talk about it. You kind of mentioned it before earlier tonight. It says, so Julie says, um, I have type 2 diabetes and friends of mine are encouraging me to start a keto diet. Uh, my family is worried, however, uh, that it might make things worse. Mm. Are they right? So you guys have talked about the benefits of keto with diabetes. In fact, I know on your website there's a blog that just got posted mm -hmm. based on a conversation that you guys had on the Ask Me Anything. Yes. So I I would say I'm not sure there's anything that much more effective when it comes to dietary intervention besides a ketogenic diet. And I think you would probably agree. I agree with there that. When it comes to the dietary shift of uh, going to a ketogenic diet is not only extremely effective, but it is safe. Now, having said that, uh, the concern that your family may have could be stemming from maybe some misinformation or some concern about, you know, how, how your blood sugars would do. So it is good to be monitored by a medical provider if you are planning on uh, lowering your blood sugar and reversing your diabetes with a ketogenic diet, but absolutely it can be safely done. And why don't you send a link to your family of this or a link to our website so they can get some real honest information about what the diet is and why it's safe and how to do it and how you can be monitored and supported um, and not just kind of learn it. And again, that it's not a fad diet. It is the way. So yeah. even our little puppy there agrees. Yeah. That's right. We got an endorsement if you're from hearing squeaks. the dog. So yeah, it, it, look, if, if you're on medicine for diabetes, you need to come see us. Yeah. We need to, we can help you. That's what we specialize in. And we can give you the right advice. Michelle is right. Uh, maybe a good analogy would be if you had spent 48 hours in the desert with no water, you would be extremely thirsty. A glass of cold water would be just awesome. <laughs> That's what the keto diet is to diabetes. It's that glass of cold water. If you're on medicine to lower your blood sugar, the thing is, is you won't be eating anything to raise your blood sugar anymore. And we need to help you get off that medicine so that you can uh, do this diet. And uh, 
Anyway, it's the way out of your diabetes. And so we'd like to help you with that. You know, we got a party crash right here. Yeah. We do. We do. That's right. For those of you who have heard Luna. of the barking, <laughs> this is Luna. This is That's the right. That's right. <laughs> she's, she's it's very unfair to have all this meat and cheese laying around yes. the moon over here. Yes, before. she's been yeah. so good. <laughs> all right, we've got about 14 minutes left in the show. Um, I wanted to get a few more questions out. Um, Should we grab Barbara real quick? Oh, Barbara. Here we go. Barbara, I see Jan. you just came in for a question. Yeah, Jan so, was first. Jan. All right. Jan, ah, what about fat head, head dough? dough? We said that in unison there. Yeah. Genius. Um, several people have told me to use it for pizza. Or anything else you want to Jan, use I like how for. you think yes. there. Yeah, Jan, yeah. we are all fans, I yes. think. I could, I could speak <laughs> unanimously here. Fathead dough is something you can Google. It's made with cream cheese, almond flour, mozzarella cheese, yes. some seasonings. It is super easy. You can make savory. Um, you know, bread-like products. You can make sweeter ones, like cinnamon rolls using swerve and cinnamon. Um, but yeah, uh, absolutely, I endorse that as a great option for when you do want a, a bread-like product. I think everyone in chat should thank Jan for bringing yes, us that because yes, yes, yes. that is an excellent, excellent yeah, uh, question like no slash recommendation <laughs> and endorse that. Yeah. Yes. All right, so Barbara, I've got a screen here I've got to read. So Barbara says, what about something called dirty keto? Yeah. <laughs> Barbara. <laughs> it says, I've seen this on Facebook. Do you guys know what dirty keto is? Yeah. Definitely heard the term. Are we allowed to talk yeah. about it? Okay. Yeah. I, so for, from, from everything I see, dirty keto is, um, I guess, kind of like what we call casual keto, yeah. or other people can call it other things I've heard, like, sloppy keto or I don't know keto ish um, it's it's not it's again it's it's doing kind of your version where you're not 100% strict am I am I right in I that? think that's my understanding yeah. yeah yeah so it doesn't it doesn't really have a negative con connotation but dirty is kind of like well I'm not just gonna eat bacon all the time the way the keto people say I should I'm actually gonna eat other things and that's good because that's fine too so, yeah. I, I thought it was just you had to finish every meal with a dirty <laughs> martini. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a diet? Yeah. yeah. All right. So we have another question here. So, Denise, thank you. Thank you for all um, for joining us. It says, Denise just wanted to say thank you oh, all thank you, so Denise. much for sharing your knowledge, professional knowledge. This has been very helpful. Um, Barbara says, Dr. Simon is the best. Trust me, I've been a patient for two years. Barbara, thanks yeah. for joining. Thank you, Barbara. Barbara's my buddy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think those are all the questions. All right, so let me go to my, my last couple questions here. Um, Tom from Winston Salem, I'm going to ask that you watch the show because we already talked about mm -hmm. keto flu. He asked about mm -hmm. that. Okay. Obviously, that's oh, something right. that people are starting the journey on yes. keto. Yes. There's yes. a lot of research out there, mm -hmm. a lot of misinformation about keto mm -hmm. flu. Um, but you know, it's always a conversation or always a question that comes up in conversation. Yeah. With electrolytes, about, you know. electrolytes. Yep. Yes. Um, and then Sunshine from Raleigh, love that name, says, I had success with keto, but then fell back into old habits. Mm -hmm. um, I gained more weight than I lost. Should I try it again? Yes. And yeah. let someone help, whether yeah. it is us or whether it is a support group on Facebook, mm -hmm. because Keto is is not unique, despite what is out there again with the world of misinformation. That when you do it, it works great, and then you stop it, and you gain more weight than you ever did. And then oh, it's only with keto that as soon as you start eating carbs, all the weight comes back. But with any restricted mm -hmm. restrictive diet plan, when you're doing it and it works, and then you stop doing it, it is no longer going to work. So it doesn't matter if it's low fat. It doesn't matter if it's strict low calorie. It does not matter. Carbohydrate, if you cut those things out and it is successful for you and then you add them back, the weight will come back, right? That's how our bodies work, unfortunately. They really like to be a higher weight, not a lower yeah, weight. That's right. They will fight you yeah. to get that so higher it's not weight. not the keto that causes the no. weight gain beyond. No. I, I would say that this is actually a real, um, this makes the case of, of why we prescribe medication to people. Obesity is a disease. Yes. And it needs to be treated. It's a chronic disease, and it needs to be treated for the long term. Mm -hmm. Medication prevents this phenomenon you're yeah. talking about, and that's why we prescribe it to people. That's a, you know, you can manage it by aggressively with long term behavioral change. It's mm -hmm. just harder to do. 
and most people find that very hard to do. Mm -hmm. And so medicine is one thing that tilts uh, the um, the scales in your favor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one thing, Sunshine, that I know I've heard you guys talk about, we understand that people will fall back sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it is okay. I know yeah. you've done a lot of videos yeah. mm -hmm. and you've, yeah. you've spoken a lot about if you're off track, yeah. that's okay. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Thorman's metabolic weight loss, you guys, true. once you're a patient once, you're always a patient, oh, so it's yeah, not like true. there's new fees or anything. Yes. It's, it's literally we welcome everybody back. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everyone's journey is a little different, but I will say 100% of people will struggle. They right. will hit a plateau, they will backslide, and that's okay because yeah. that's part of the process and it's how we learn, right? In order to know how to get back up, you got to fall a couple of times and then and then you figure it out. And, and with support and with yeah. help and with guidance, it, it's that much easier. Yep. All right. So uh, thank you for that question, Sunshine. Um, welcome back to Keto. Hopefully we gave you some great dishes that you can be inspired yeah. to, to get back into it and throw your own virtual dinner party. Um, and keto invite dinner us. Party. Yeah. Yeah. We'll bring the fudge. Go to Casual Keto on uh, Instagram. Go to the Casual Keto Doctor on Instagram and get some great recipes. Uh, all right, so Trina from Wilmington, all the way in Wilmington, Beach City. There yeah. you go. Um, it says, I'm always running um, back and forth from work um, and family. I guess they're juggling a lot. Mm -hmm. Any tips on how to maintain a busy life on keto? Mm. I think that's kind of a question for everybody. Like, I'd yeah. like to know the answer just in general. What, right, what's the answer right. to that? What, what I tend to do is I will cook a lot on the weekend, either Saturday or Sunday, and have it for the week. Um, and then that way it's easy. And I, and I think really, and I think you would agree, Michelle, that it's, you want to make sure you have something simple that you can just grab from yes. the fridge and the way you go. Mm -hmm. um, we tend to make poor choices when we are out and about and not prepared. Right. So the meat sticks, you know, always have those mm -hmm. in the car, mm -hmm. um, have bacon already cooked up, have your eggs already cooked up, mm -hmm. you know, cook a couple of chicken breasts and have them in the fridge, uh, whatever you can think of to get you through the week. Yes. Um, and then bring the kids in on it, bring your partner in on it and, you know, have, have a family afternoon on a Saturday or Sunday and prep for the week. Um, the success is to have something ready for you to take with you at any time mm -hmm. that the kids can snack on. And also, don't bring things in the house that you cannot eat. If you're the only one on keto and the rest of your family is not, try not to bring that into the house. Uh, it makes it that much harder for you. Uh, but the goal is to have everyone in the family on keto. I think that's mm -hmm. what, we, what we would hope. The meal prep. Yeah. is a big topic that people Real talk about friend. a lot. Mm -hmm. That sounds scarier than it actually is. It just means, you know, take some time, cook yeah. a bunch of food, mm -hmm. you know, store it, and then just keep going back yeah. to it. Absolutely. You know? That way you don't get caught. Mm -hmm. You don't have to You don't have to worry. You know, it's always nice to know you have something ready for you yes. than it is to now sit here and go, uh-uh. Right, that's right. And plan your snacks, too. Yeah. Not just make a meal, yeah. you know, and pull from that, but plan some snacks mm -hmm. as well. Absolutely, yeah. Those are some great, great points that Tina mm -hmm. had. And, I like the idea of plan A, B, and C. I talk about this in my page a lot. Plan A was you did that, you were Kim, and you did this amazing thing where you cooked all this delicious stuff, right? Plan B is you bought some cans of salmon or some tuna or some cans of chicken, and you made buffalo chicken dip real quick, or you made tuna salad, or at least you got some eggs, you can fry those up real quick, nothing, nothing fancy. And then plan C is, you know, stuffing the bottom of your book bag or purse or your car consult with some nuts. And some meat sticks so that if, if all else fails and you don't have access you still have something that you've planned ahead on mm -hmm. so it does not have to be fancy or time consuming or expensive i love it i love it yeah. all right um and then you know as you're talking about getting ahead of your week you know mm -hmm. when you're dealing with family and work and everything that's going on it's also nice to have a gift card to a grocery store yes. so if you joined us tonight i'm going to ask our producer mary who's in my ear she's going to mm -hmm. randomly select a winner by the end of the show so those that have commented in our comments you talked about how wonderful i am at my charcuterie board <laughs> any dishes that you guys loved uh make sure that you are putting it in our in our chat in our comments because our producer will actually put up a name in a second that uh, she'll randomly select a winner and someone will get a $75 gift card to Wegmans. And if you happen to be in the area without a Wegmans, we can figure 
figure out another another gift card. Um, so just real quick, I want to give a shout out to Kim. Thank you, Kim, for for you know making all these delicious dishes. I want to thank Michelle and and Dr. Simons and Tina. You guys work all week with patients. You're talking about keto every single day. And this is your weekend off. You guys came in on a Sunday evening to talk to everyone out there more about keto. Uh, so thank you for taking the time to do that. Thank, so, of course. And thank you for having me. It's not just a job. Yes. It's a passion. It's a lifestyle. It yeah. Right. So. All right. And I think I got, a, I got a winner in my ear here real quick. So I have everyone. All right. So Drum roll, please. let's see if we can see it up here real quick. Walisha Thornton, Yay! you are there. Walisha Thornton. Okay. When's the seven? That was a question that popped up. No, no, no. She no. just pulled it up so I could see uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Walisha, that was, that was uh, is that a question that I need to answer as well? Oh, let's answer this question as well. Walisha. So Walisha, okay. So we, Walisha is the winner and she has a question. All right. All right. So congratulations, Walisha. We'll go ahead and um, coordinate with you. We'll uh, DM you to get your email address and coordinate the gift card. Uh, to you, but you also had a great question. It says, if you have addressed this, I apologize for missing. Uh, but what about Rebel, uh, the keto ice, ice cream? cream? I think that falls in the same category yeah. as yeah. the um, the low carb tortillas that were brought up. I think some people can do moderate amounts and be okay. Other people, especially if it's a trigger food, ice cream, it can be hard to have around. I will say, if it's not a trigger food. And you want another option that's maybe a little less expensive because Rebel is kind of a specialty product. Tasty, but specialty. It is so easy to make keto ice cream at home. You can yes. get a ice cream maker off Amazon for like 30 bucks. And it's basically like heavy cream, half and half. You can do egg yolks, um, the swerve. I mean, look up some recipes. There are ways to make some delicious keto desserts. Besides the fudge, so I'm gonna eat it all. We're gonna end with the fudge. Well, Alicia, we appreciate you with that question. I love that you are thinking about ice cream um, because obviously that is a go-to for a lot of folks. And mm -hmm. There are a lot of different brands out there right now. Yeah. There are a lot of people are, there are are trying different things, but it's nice to be in that that keto community where you're sharing your best practices and things that you like and enjoy. Um, I think it's very very important. Um, so we've got plenty of food here, so we're going to continue to keep the party going. Um, we're going to now truly eat that salmon and <laughs> jump, jump into that cauliflower. Um, but I, I want to just quickly just give a shout out to Mary, who's our producer, who is behind the scenes. She is making things happen for us, uh, trying to keep us straight. Um, I wanted to also just give one last question to you guys, because there may be some folks out there um, who, like Mary, are veg vegetarians. And there are folks that maybe hear all these great benefits of keto, mm -hmm. but they are also practicing vegetarians. Mm -hmm. So I think what I would assume is that there is still absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Mm -hmm. There are ways to be pescatarian, um, uh, lacto ova. There's all different names whether you eat eggs or whether you eat dairy products or whether you eat um, salmon. Uh, you can absolutely do it. There are so many healthy fats. Um, if you take the bacon out of our guac tini. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's a hundred percent vegetarian. Yeah. The cauliflower, totally vegetarian. Mm -hmm. Of course, the asparagus. Um, so there are absolutely ways to do it. Yeah. Um, and I, I think there are some vegetarian recipes all there over are. the yeah. casual yeah. keto. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. you can you can go there to to find some. Again, we invite right. you guys into the Casual Keto Doctor Instagram page. We can put it up on the screen. Um, but the main thing is, is that you know there's a huge keto community that's out there. Yes. I mean, this has really become not only popular, but really necessary for folks mm -hmm. to share good information. Yes. And we want to thank you for putting that out there. Because yeah. you've been doing it in your practice every single day for years and years and years. And now it's really just celebrating the fact that now people are understanding that together they can find and share good information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah. And thank you Good to Del and, oh. and, 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 and Mary. Thank, thank you so you. much. They, yeah. they make all of this happen for us with the AMAs yeah. and for this, which is just incredible. Couldn't do it without you. Yes, thank you. Well, we appreciate yeah. it. So up your let's let's uh, keep that that uh, thank you going with the fact that we want to thank you guys for watching. Make sure if you haven't had a chance to like the video, like the video. If you are 
so inclined, please share it with your friends um, on your Facebook page. That way more people can hear it. I mean, we had a good time, right? Good time. Great. Yeah. You know, nothing too intense. Great food, great people, great conversation, great viewers that sent in great, great uh, questions as well. So share it. And then again, tomorrow we're going to rebroadcast uh, for the AMA, which would have been a normal Ask Me Anything session on Facebook. So if you go to Dr. Simon's Facebook page tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., we're going to rebroadcast the show for you guys, and we'll have live commenting as well. Uh, so we want to thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we hope you have a delicious Sunday evening. If not tonight, you've got plenty of nights to plan something because we've got lots of great recipes ready, ready to share with you. Okay? Mm -hmm. You guys have fun. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for attending. <laughs>